Thank you for coming. This is the Enter and Eater to Entrepreneur program. Uh, my name is John Odom Brown. I'm going to be your instructor today. I'm also the program uh, coordinator here. Uh, my job is to focus highly on your guys' entrepreneur development. And so we build programs. We have events here. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the other opportunities we have. We have like a, a challenge, a sustainability challenge that's coming up very soon that you guys can pre prepare for. The new virtual competition that's going on, we help you with some, some mentorship, some coaching on your business models, your development there. So there's a lot more that we do than just coach and advise. We are entrepreneurs as well. I'm a three-time entrepreneur. I also have an investment company. Cedrip is also an entrepreneur as well. He's also a grad student. Um, he's also been through many different stages of entrepreneurship in college, from just ideation or also working on other people's projects, also working on ours. So if you have any particular questions as we go through, don't be afraid to ask. I'm sure we can handle them. I'm okay with random questions. That's not an issue for me. But um, this is an engaging environment. So the one thing I do not do is I'm not a lecturer. I'm not your professor. I could care less to lecture you. My whole point here is to really engage with you and to really try to find, make sure that this information is being able to be, install, be instilled into you and that you're, willing to, um, that you're actually confident to be able to apply it, okay? So without further ado, we will begin. Today, I would like to see whoever didn't register, go ahead and register real quick by scanning this. I cannot let you get out of here without registering. Otherwise, there's no proof you were here. There's no proof that I'm talking to nobody. All right. So for those who are registered and registering, you still have to also check in. So go ahead and check in. If you haven't checked in yet, go ahead and scan this and check in. That means you will get uh, the opportunity to get uh, access to our, our uh, email that's going to go after here for our feedback. Um, that would be very important for us to figure out if this program, this structure is right for uh, teaching and learning. And that would actually help us make some adjustments overall. All right, while you guys finish that, we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. So today is really talking about kickstarting your entrepreneur journey. When we meet entrepreneur, you're an anteater. The whole thing is that you're an anteater, you can become an entrepreneur, but it really means you're trying to go through the process of entrepreneurship. No matter if you have no ideas right now, or if you've been holding on to an idea for two years, three years, and trying to figure it all out, or the pandemic hit and you came up with some concepts, some ideas that you want to work on, this is what we're trying to do is try to get those ideas out your head. But before we can even talk about ideas throughout the rest of the programming, throughout this rest of this quarter, I really wanted to hyper-focus on what is going to be uh, like actually tackling the entrepreneur journey. So if you're not an entrepreneur today, you don't consider yourself one, or you haven't actually you know, done anything in business and you don't feel like you're an entrepreneur today, I hope by the end of this you can figure out how you can take some of the skills that you're going to learn and apply them to be able to go through the process. Okay? So like I said, it's going to be an engaging class. So right now, I'm going to ask a couple questions and see who can help me uh, generate some, some uh, response here. So what is the entrepreneur mindset? Right? What have you heard? What have you seen? Right? What have you experienced? Right? Who wants to tell me what they think the entrepreneur mindset is? Yep. And remember, the goal here is not about you know, being correct. Um, I think it's something that focuses specifically on production and innovation. Um, involved in making new things, of course, for the end goal of profit. Okay, I like that. Go ahead. Like doing something that's never been done before. Okay. So an entrepreneur mindset, doing something that's never been done before. Got it. Anybody else? Uh, I think it's more than just uh, come up with an idea. It's more about how we're gonna carry that out. How we're gonna uh, keep forward. Uh, how we're gonna like, uh, uh, like carry out this plan for a long period. Okay, okay. 
Yourself, sir? Um, I'm right now. I'm more uh, wondering about how to promote uh, business, or I just actually figured out what the meaning of an LLC was mm -hmm. from my father. <laughs> So just the the legal, don't worry. The they legal just came along. acronyms and everything and the meanings of them. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. So the beautiful thing is, is that none of you are actually wrong. There's a lot of different perspectives. First and foremost, all of us have our own different perspective, right? Either the way we grew up, what we learned, having parents who may give you some knowledge or information about what things are or are not. Being able to watch movies, maybe some movies inspired you, gave you some information what entrepreneurial mindset is or an entrepreneur may be. We all gain information from all different ways and walks of life. So there's no true, true definition. It is definitely going to come from the experiences that you have of what you think an entrepreneurial mindset is. But if you were to ask successful entrepreneurs and or entrepreneurs who tried and failed, they will probably tell you that you have to have a certain mindset most likely to go through this process. Imagine someone going to go be a doctor, right? Being a doctor is not so easy. You go through the whole process, and then you also have to go through all the schooling, and then eventually you might make it into being a doctor, right? Maybe eight years to 16 years sometimes, depending on what kind of specialty you're looking for. Who has to have a right mindset for that, right? Does a business person go through the process of a doctor? Not really, but the business person goes through the process of a business person, right? So an entrepreneur goes through the process of like an entrepreneur for an entrepreneur, and we're going to talk about the mindset is what, the, what is needed to go through that process. So a lot of you probably heard that the entrepreneur mindset is, you know, is about being you know, forward thinking and being more innovative and things like that. That's, that's great. But I want to give you guys a general definition to show you how this general definition is going to help cater to all of the other components of an entrepreneurial uh, journey. Okay, So one of those uh, perspectives is the mindset, right? the mental fortitude. The mental fortitude of an entrepreneur to overcome the pressures of the unknown, the uncertain, and that which is unfamiliar. <coughs> okay. So, the unknown, the uncertain, and that which is unfamiliar. Can we agree with this definition, disagree with this definition, have something, to, have something to say about the definition? Anyone? Agree to disagree, have a different perspective? Okay. So, if we can agree, right, that the mental fortitude that you need to go through something that is unknown, Right? Imagine, imagine real quickly the, the time period where you were a, um, a, a high school senior and you decided you were going to go to school, go, be, go to college. You had no idea what college actually was, did you? You just knew. Someone told me it's going to be about education, and if I get a good education, I get a good job. You knew that was the perspective, but you didn't know anything about the process, right? So you stepped into the unknown with all of this stuff in front of you that you need to know what to expect, right? So there's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of unfamiliarity of the process that you will go through, right? This is the exact same thing you're going, through, going to go through as an entrepreneur in the very beginning. So if we look at that, I wanted to make sure that at least you guys can see that the unknown is something that is going to always be present throughout the process of entrepreneurship. Until you actually find a problem that you want to solve, and that problem that's being solved, someone tells you it's going to be solved and they're willing to either pay you for it or the problem that's being solved actually works, you won't know if what you're doing is correct. You won't know. So you're going to go through the process of changing and iterating and making adjustments over and over and over again. And it takes a certain mindset of a person to want to be able to do the same thing and over and over and over again. Right? So who here plays sports? Anybody play sports? Yeah? What do you play? So what, what kind of sports do you like to play? Basketball. Basketball. So playing basketball, there's a different levels to basketball, right? So can you play in the NBA today? I wish I could. Yeah, you wish you could. I can wish I could too. Yeah. So now you have a certain confidence of why you think you can do so, right? Because you know you probably can do the training. That's not going to be the problem. You think you, you know you have certain skills today that can be honed to be better when you get to that level, right? So you know that you're going to put in what? That work, the effort, right? 
And that's the exact same thing I'm trying to get you guys to think about. You don't know necessarily the different levels of entrepreneurship. You haven't been through them, but you hear about them all the time. People becoming successful, an 18-year-old getting a million dollars, X, Y, and Z. You see it all the time. You see people go through different stages, but are you willing to actually do what it takes to go through those stages too? Sometimes we think that's a little, some people would just make it really easy, right? They own the magazine, you know, they just, they just graduated high school or graduated first year in college and they end up building something amazing. But we don't know what they went through. We don't know the journey. We don't know the unknown that they had to go through. We don't know any of their story unless they tell us what it was, right? So that's what's going to happen with you guys. And I want you guys to think about that along the way, along the rest of the, this, uh, this workshop and the program if you guys decide to continue. So what I want you guys to do is think about a scorecard, all right? So this scorecard is really associated to um, a methodology that I came up with that's called the core, uh, core variables game, okay? So we're gonna play this little core variables game for a second. And if you've already been to the program and you know what I'm doing, don't say nothing too loud, all right? So the core variables game is I'm gonna, you see questions in front of you. There are four variables that affect each and every single one of us on a daily basis. We are all affected by these variables, no matter what stage in life that we're at, right? But every person is affected by it, but we all have to do, deal with it differently, okay? So what I would like to see is that I'm gonna ask these questions. I'm gonna see if you guys can ask the questions, see if we can come up with these variables. So who would like to ask number one? Let's do it, let's do it. What core? Oh no, you're good. You're good. Oh, what core variable is limited to 24 hours a day and must be allocated effectively to achieve success in both personal and professional life? Mm -hmm. What core variable is limited to 24 hours a day? Huh? Time. Oh, are you that smart? Okay, so we got time. Easy, right? Easy. Who wants to do the third question? Yeah. Which which core variable is crucial for maintaining focus on the right task and goals in a hyper connected world? Critical for maintaining focus. What is this core variable? We all have to deal with it on a daily basis. Consistency. I like that. It's it's kind of close, but the focus is you know, consistency is more of like this, 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 this thing you go through, right? The focus, the maintain focus is critical for maintaining focus, attention. right? Which one? Attention. Attention, attention. Jeez, you guys are actually pretty good. All right, all right. What about the fourth question, fifth question, sorry, fifth question. What about you, Rob? Which core variable determines the resources available to individuals and the financial freedom they can achieve? Right. Which core variable determines the resources available to individuals and the financial freedom? What core variable is this? I'll read it, I'll read it out loud as well. Right? Which core variable determines the resources available to individuals and the financial freedom they can achieve? What variable is needed for financial freedom? Money. Man, I ain't even got to do the rest of the presentation. You guys are smart. All right. Last one. I'll read it. Right? Which core variable is an, is an inherent part of life and involves the exploration of new ideas, opportunities, and strategies? Well, we already got time on the board. So take time in consideration, take attention in consideration, and take money in consideration. You want to use your time, your attention, and your money to go do something. You are doing what? Yeah. Risk. Risk. Smart. You're taking a risk, are you not? Because you could be doing something else with what? Your time, your attention, your money. And you could be taking different risk, right? right? But every single day, we all deal with this. I just want you guys to think about it for a second. If we all deal with it as regular human beings, right? We all deal with it. As an entrepreneur, you gotta deal with it a little bit differently, do you not? You have to think a little bit differently how you're gonna manage your time, how you're gonna manage your attention, manage your money, and take on certain risks that are gonna come out to certain out, have a certain outcome, right? But we all do that. So, what I wanna do is go over a quick video real quick.
to help you guys kind of put this into perspective. But the difference between someone who says, I want to be an entrepreneur and someone who actually becomes an entrepreneur is the difference of how they manage their time, their attention, their money, and the risk in the process of becoming an entrepreneur. But a lot of that has, has to happen when you start changing the way you think about time, change the way you think about money, right? Change the way you think about the risk you're taking. And a lot of that starts with the growth mindset. So who knows about the growth mindset? Yeah, heard about it before. Do you know who, one of the, who was the founder, the one who came up with the, met, uh, the methodology or the mindset behind it? Her name was Carol Dweck, right? Carol Dweck. She is a renowned professor, renowned researcher, but she felt like this topic had not been expressed enough, and people were confused what it means to have a fixed mindset versus a growth mindset. How do some people become so successful, and some people don't reach that success, but they so want to obtain it? Some people have certain skills or certain way of thinking. And she wanted to bring that to, to life a little bit. So let's go through this video real quickly. There's one, one video that we're going to go through today. I think we have two. But this is one that I wanted you guys to get because we're going to have a little quick exercise after. Uh-oh. All right, all right. <clears throat> so, if you didn't know about the growth mindset or the fixed mindset before, what do you think about this perspective? What do you think about it? Did you catch her? Did you capture what they actually said? Did you understand and comprehend it? Yeah. So basically, all they're actually trying to tell you is there is a difference in the way that when you speak and you say that you're gonna do something, right? There's a difference in the way that you speak and how you're gonna help yourself go through that process, right? If you have a fixed mindset about things, it's gonna be probably hard for you to come up with new ideas and new ways of thinking, new ways of doing, new ways of acting, right? So if that's so true, then how can you adjust that? And it actually takes just a little, little, little step, right? So we're gonna play a little quick game real quick. You see this little workshop in front of you right now. And uh, I'm sorry, a worksheet uh, for the workshop in front of you right now. And it has 10 phrases on it. And in those 10 phrases, in those 10 phrases, um, five of them are growth, five of them are fixed. But also, one is the opposite of the other. So I'm going to give you guys two minutes real quick. You can probably take a, maybe get your pen or whatever you do. Put whichever one you think is a growth, put a G next to it. 
whatever you think is a fix, put an F next to it, and then connect them and see which one do you feel is the opposite of the other. And we're going to go through and have a little conversation about it. If you don't have a pen, I have some for you. Let me know if you need one. Which one do you think is a growth? Which one do you think is a fixed phrase, right? All right, even though you have which one is growth, even which one is fixed, which one is the opposite of the other? Draw a line to the one which you think is the opposite to the other. Okay, got about one minute. Hey, oh, come in, come in, for sure. Oh, that's okay. Oh yeah, no problem. So I can give you a few things real quick, and then you can jump right in. I'll re-explain where we are right now. All right, so where we are right now, have you ever heard of the growth mindset versus fixed mindset? Okay, so a growth mindset is more about more positive way of thinking, a more affirmation way of thinking, and a fixed mindset is more of a stale or a stagnant way of thinking, okay? So what we're basically trying to talk about and, and try to think about is how can we identify when we are telling ourselves a fixed perspective or giving ourselves a fixed perspective by the way we talk, by the way we, by the way we engage, right? So what you have in front of you is 10 phrases. 10 phrases, five of them are fixed, five of them are growth, and one is the opposite of the other. So go ahead, I'll give you two minutes real quick. Just put G next to the one that is growth. Put F next to the one you think is fixed. You don't have to be right. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain to you how you be right, but go ahead and put G or F next to the one you think is growth or fixed mindset phrase, okay? And so the reason why I'm actually having you guys, you can go ahead, but the reason why I'm actually having you guys do this is because sometimes we could be the one to stop ourselves from doing things. We can tell ourselves, I'm no good at this. Uh, you know, man, I, don't, I come from a different background. I don't know if I'm even capable of doing it. We can have other people tell us that we're not good at something. Why? Because they know us for who we are today versus who we want to become in the future. So if we are always talking about, man, I'm going to be a business owner. I'm going to be this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to make this different kind of money. I'm going to do this or that. And everyone, everyone around us, our friends or our family is like, man, that's not you. You don't do those type of things. How are you going to do those type of things? What do you mean? No one in our family is, is an entrepreneur or something like that, right? What if other people told you things and you actually believed them and you stopped yourself from actually thinking about the opportunities that you could have in the future, right? Sometimes it's other people that get in our way of helping us or, or, or where we're trying to go within our goals or things that we want to accomplish um, or successes, right? People can get in the way. Environments can get in the way. Circumstances get in the way. Think about people during the pandemic, right? How many people probably started businesses in 2020 and literally their product businesses or their service businesses? Imagine how many of those people put all their money, effort, time, energy, and took that risk, and then the pandemic happened, and guess what happened? They couldn't do it, right? 
a lot of people could not do what they wanted to do. Some people started businesses during the pandemic, didn't they? Made a lot of money, had a lot of success, right? Some people wanted to start a business during the, during the pandemic, did not start a business during the pandemic, right? Even some of the successful people who have started multiple companies before had a large problems with their company or whatever it may be, they decided to just relax. They didn't even think about the next innovation that they could probably be engaged in or next industries that could be impacted because of the pandemic, right? So some people came out of it with value. Some people came out of it with a lot of rest. Some people came out of it a little sick. Some people came out of it with new ideas they want to work on. Some people came out of it with a business that they could work on, right? And all that starts with is a different way of thinking. Some of us could have said the pandemic stopped us from everything, and we can use that excuse probably for the rest of our life. We all could, because the pandemic was rough. But what about those ones who actually did something? What, what's the difference between their mindset versus our mindset, right? OK. So what I'm going to do real quick is we're going to go ahead and do a matchup. OK? Once again, it's not about being 100% wrong and not be, about being 100% right. It's about where your mindset is right now and the way that you actually talk. So, who had, I can always improve on the growth? Yeah? Good job. And the opposite was, I made a big mistake. Who had that one? No? Yeah? You had that one? I don't know if it was connected, but. Can, yeah. Okay. I think someone needs to like realize they have a big mistake, so I put them in the middle. Okay, that's, that's fine. And, and here's the thing. If you actually say, you know what, man, I made a big mistake, you got two things to do. You can say, oh, man, I made a big mistake, and I don't know what else to do. Or I made a big mistake, and I want to find out what that was, and I want to improve, right? Think about yourself being in school right now, right? Oh, you know what? I said I was going to give my, my assignments, my work, two hours of study this week, and I didn't do it. I got a midterm tomorrow. You know you didn't give yourself two hours, right? So because you know you didn't give yourself two hours, that was a big mistake. But now you can say next time, oh, you know what? I'm not going to do that next time. I'm going to actually figure out a schedule. So I'm going to improve something. I'm going to adjust something, right? So what about? Plan B is an option. You guys get that on growth? Plan B is an option. The opposite being <laughs> plan B. Plan B is an option. It's a fixed mindset. I think plan B is always a must. But here's the thing. If you had a plan A and it didn't work, and you're like, you know what? Plan A didn't work. I'm not doing nothing else. Yeah. I think like plan B is an option. It doesn't mean that it have to go with the plan B. It means that. You, you can have an option to do something else, right? So it's not necessary that you always plan to have a plan B. No one's saying that. But if you started off with plan A and plan A didn't work, the perspective is, is there another way? Is there something else I can do, which ends up becoming plan B secret, uh, you know, uh, um, synonymously, right? So got two more real quick. What am I missing? Anyone put that in growth mindset? What am I missing? Opposite being, I'm not good at this. Anyone get that? I'm not good at this? No one got that one right? OK. Real style is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. So <laughs> what am I missing? It is what it is. <laughs> well, it is what it is. No, no, no. Think about it. If I say I'm not good at something, is it because I don't think I have the skill? Is it because I don't think I'm, I'm the right person? Is it because um, um, I lack the effort? We don't know. Everyone says this differently, right? I'm not good at this. But really, what you should be thinking about is, if I'm not good at something, was well, probably because I'm missing something. I'm probably missing a skill. I'm probably missing knowledge. I'm probably missing some perspective on how to be better at it, right? So. The goal is, is that if you ever tell yourself I'm not good at something, rethink that for a second and be like, okay, hold on, hold on. What am I actually missing? Right? So in business, you're trying to solve a problem for someone. You're trying to solve a problem. And if you thought solving a problem was this way, but you found out that it wasn't, then what should you do? Right? What am I missing? Maybe my customer, the person that I asked, hey, does this solve your problem? No, it doesn't. 
holy man, what am I missing, right? We all are going to have to go through that. Every business has been through more than one iteration. There's never been a successful business that got started off of one single idea and never made any adjustments. Not impossible, right? So the last two that I want to go through real quick, how can I be of help? It's not my problem. Anyone want to get those two together? So the reason why you got those two together? OK, give me your perspective. Uh, like it's just about helping others, I guess, like in a way. If you say okay. it's not my problem, then you're not like right. trying to uh, assist others. How can I be of help is more friendly, more Perfect. So the reason why, the reason why that's important is because if you help someone else, you possibly could start learning how you can be better at helping yourself. Sometimes in entrepreneurship, we want to go do everything ourselves, right? So if someone comes to you and says, hey, I have this idea I've been working on, but I cannot fix it. I don't know what to do. I just don't know how to get past this next step. But they come to you because they think you might have some value, and you say, hey, it's not my problem. I don't know. Or you can say, how can I help, right? Because what if you're stuck in that problem? What if you're stuck? And you're like, I need help, but I, you know, I don't know what else to do. And you're saying this, and you're telling your mentor, you're telling your friends, or you're telling your parents, I need help. And someone says, that's, that's not my problem. That's you. Wouldn't you feel a little bit you know, like heartbroken? Like, mom, that's not your problem. I know, but I'm your son. I'm your daughter. What? Right? I need help. So at some point, it's going to come down to where you, the person, you're going to need help someday. But if you've never, ever helped someone else or you've never, ever attempted to go through the process, it's going to be very, very hard for you to actually figure out how to ask for help, seek help, right? So other thing is, last one, I'll do it over again versus it is what it is. A lot of times we can say, you know what, I've tried this five, ten times. I don't know what else to do. It is what it is. Easy for us to say that. Very easy for us to say that. But in business, from an entrepreneur perspective, if you say that, that means you're really not trying to become an entrepreneur. That means you're also not really willing to go through the process of becoming an entrepreneur, right? You should be thinking about how could I do something over? What do I need to reiterate? What do I need to change? What do I need to adjust, right? That's how you go through a different way of thinking, all right? So we went over the growth mindset. We talked about what an entrepreneur mindset is. You guys know exactly what that is from the perspective of how to gain it, right? So what I would like for you guys to do, not today, but when you get back, I'm going to give you access to a resource document that will have this information here. And I would like you guys to own your own, start building your own personal manifesto. Your personal manifesto is like, hey, why did I even want to become an entrepreneur? Or why am I even interested in entrepreneurship? Why? What happened? Why, did I, why am I different a little bit? Right? All my friends want to go hang out and go do something else. But I actually am here right now in this class. Like, what is it that brought me into this class? Why am I interested? I would like for you guys to write down, write about a moment in time where you were able to overcome a challenge that was full of unknowns. Right? Write about a moment in time when you were able to overcome a challenge that was full of unknowns. So I'm not asking you guys to do that now, but raise your hand if you've been through some challenges that you didn't know what the heck this was going to be about, but you've been through some challenges, right? Doesn't matter whatever life challenges they are, right? I want you guys to think about it. How did you get through that, right? Because getting through something that was unknown, but actually beating that challenge or going through the process of beating that challenge, there takes a certain mindset. You have to think differently and do differently, right? in order to get out of that challenge. Every single day as an entrepreneur, no matter if you're running a company or you're just now starting to build a company, you're going to go through certain challenges. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough resources. I don't have enough people. I'm not smart enough. I don't know how to build the technology to build an app. Whatever it may be, you're going to go through these challenges. But the difference is about entrepreneurship versus everything else, it's going to test you every single day. And it's up to you to tell yourself, you know what? I've been through some stuff before. I can get through this too. Let me figure it out, right? That's what I'm asking you guys to do from an entrepreneur mindset, OK? So once again, you guys are going to get this presentation. So now you have information on the entrepreneur mindset. But we're going to go over what's the entrepreneur spirit. Who thinks there's a difference between the entrepreneur mindset and the entrepreneur spirit? The only thing is different? OK. So what is your thought? Since you guys don't know what the difference is, which I'm not expecting anyone to, 
Who can tell me what their thought is of what an entrepreneur's spirit is? Um, as opposed to like <clears throat> a mindset which I feel like can be trained, engaged. I feel like the entre entrepreneur spirit is something that's inherently inside you. It's something that makes you want to push those limits and create. Like that. Like that. Okay. Something that will help you push that limit, right? To push through the process. Anyone else? Who has their other thought, their own perspective? Remember, one of the best things about entrepreneurship is your perspective is your perspective. However you see the world, however you see things, is how you see it. You see a particular problem you want to solve, maybe someone else doesn't see it as a problem, right? So, anyone else? Entrepreneur spirit, your own thoughts. To build off on that, I was just going to say uh, confidence. Uh, it just takes confidence, like it's spirit. Mm -hmm. like, just letting people know what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. and being open about it because it can't grow like on your own. Got it. So basically, if you don't say nothing, no one knows nothing. But being more forward about it, that steps you into, that's getting you out of your own head, getting, out, getting you out of your own environment. And now she knows, he knows. And maybe there's a similar connection, right? And we never would have known unless you would have said something. Love that. All right. So entrepreneur's spirit, once again, there is no definition, right? There is no real definition. And the reason why there's no real definition is because it is left up to your perspective, left up to your experiences. How did you gain your entrepreneur spirit, right? So the entrepreneur spirit I'm going to give a definition to that's very general. But I want to see if you guys can agree with this definition and how it's going to cater to what we said about the entrepreneur mindset. You'll have access to that later. Don't worry about it, all right? So the definition is, it is a gift that drives right, and motivates the ambition of an entrepreneur to act with purpose against that which is, the, which is considered the status quo, right? It is a gift, right? All of us have a reason why we want to become an entrepreneur or gain entrepreneurial skills, right? Maybe we want to work for a better co a company and we want to be a better employee, but as an employee, we want to be growth thinking, we want to be more innovative, and we want to be able to go up the ranks from being able to be an entry to being able to be an executive, we want to do that in five years. How are you going to do that if you don't know or begin to build the process, right? Something has to drive you. Well, maybe, you know what, maybe, you, maybe your parents got to become a doctor or an engineer or whatever it may be, and you're like, you know what, I don't want to do that. I want to do something different. What's driving you to do something different than what you know to be standard in the status quo, right? So we know for sure a lot of Asian families, right? Think about Shidrip, you know, you know the whole thing. Asian families, we know what it is. Go be a doctor, go be an engineer, go be a scientist, go be something. We know that's always a stereotype, right? But we know there's a lot of parents who stick with that, right? Go be a doctor, go be this, go be that. And if you think about entrepreneurship just a little bit, it's like, why are you thinking differently? Mom was one, dad was one, uncle's one, cousin's one. Go be, go do what everyone else does. That's a stereotype, right? And if we believe in stereotypes, we could easily fall into that process, right? But something's going to irk you if you're a creative person or an innovative person or someone who thinks a little bit differently. And then how do you get that spirit to go begin to act? That's why it's highlighted. Act with purpose, right? Not just to act, just to be spiteful of your parents. Not to just be spiteful of the fact that you just want to be contrarian or different. Act with purpose. Why is entrepreneurship a process for you? Why is gaining the entrepreneur skills something that's really necessary for you? This is something each of you have to ask yourselves as you begin moving forward. I'll tell you one reason why I wanted to be an entrepreneur very, very early was because I didn't understand the term entrepreneur. I was frustrated. Someone brought it up to me and was like, entrepreneurship, man, you should go do this. You should try it. You did something amazing. You should go try to do that outside, right? Go do that again. I was like, what is entrepreneurship? I don't know nothing about this term. I'm at, at the time, I was like 20, 25 years old. I had no idea what the word or the term entrepreneurship meant. But entrepreneurship has been around us all our lives. People have small businesses in our neighborhoods, right? P big corporations, right? We see people build technology, right? We go to the library. That's still someone had to build that. Whatever it may be, it's all around you. But no one had ever spoken to me the word in 25 years what an entrepreneur was. That's weird to me. That was so off. So I decided to study it. I decided to go deeper and deeper, right? 
and I decided to get a master's degree in entrepreneurship, right, in innovation entrepreneurship. That taught me the different understandings and the processes, and then that got me into the space of entrepreneurship, right? But I wanted to be different. I wanted to say, hey, the status quo is not, not telling people things. Let me go deeper, right? So that drove me into the process of wanting to be an entrepreneur, okay? So what I want you guys to do is think about, in another, another scorecard, is how can you test your entrepreneur spirit, right? And I'm going to share with you a different methodology that you guys have probably never heard of. And it's really just the basis of being different energies. You guys have heard the whole thing of positive energy, negative energy, right? So a lot of times, negativity can hold you back from pursuing your dreams, right? No matter if it's your own negativity or everyone else around you or the environment, right? Maybe the economy. Right now, we're in a downturn. The economy is really tough to do things. Maybe that's just something that tells you, you know, I don't want to try anything. Why? Because the economy is crazy. Let me just go get something that's very secure, right? We all might want that. But so certain negative drivers will keep you from doing what you want to do. But then there's those positive drivers that we all have. But when you're starting to do something brand new, you're always going to have uncertainty, and you're always going to have unfamiliarity. What's the difference? Unfamiliarity is you don't know what it's going to take. You don't know the process, right? Uncertainty is you don't even know what the outcome could be. You don't know what the outcome is going to look like, but you could be willing to go through the process. So what could be a positive driver that could drive you forward to go through the process of entrepreneurship, right? So I put these quadrants here because each of us are going to find ourselves in these quadrants at some point. I can be uncertain about something, but I can be positive that if I put forth the effort, I can probably get there. We talked about it earlier in MBA, right? If you were given the opportunity, knowing your skill set, knowing your work ethic, knowing your hustle, knowing your ability to learn and be coach, you would probably go after that, would you not? With the opportunity sitting right in front of you, right? So. We all can base off of our reasons how something we can have positive drivers to help us go do something, act, right? So I'm going to ask you know, whoever wants to share, what is one positive reason why you wanted to be in this class today, right? And or why you were thinking about pursuing entrepreneurship? Anybody? What is one positive reason why you're in the class today? and also wanted to pursue entrepreneurship? Um, I'm growing a photography page right now. Mm -hmm. I've just uh, been trying to promote it on campus uh, and just trying to grow it. It's like social media, so yep, it's yep. slow from the beginning, but once you get like some traction, I guess. Uh, so the positivity for you is trying to gain a little bit of information or knowledge or resources to figure out how you grow, promote this business, on campus right now. Yeah. Your goal is obviously probably much larger than campus, but you want to figure out how you do it right now, right? Yeah. Perfect, perfect. Anybody else? One positive reason why you're in class today and or why you want to pursue entrepreneurial skills? Anybody? Okay, so for me, like I said, one of the positive things, that I, uh, another positive aspect for me was I had kids. I got kids. So when I got out the military, I was like, okay, did 10 years in the Marine Corps. What else do I want to do? I'm going to go bet on myself so that I can give my kids a better life, right? That's all, that's all it was. I'm going to give my kids a better life, right? And was it a bad life? No, 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 no. But do I want to give them more? Yes. How am I going to give them more? Well, I didn't want to go work for an organization. I wanted to go do something for myself. So that's how simple it was for me. I want to do something more for myself and give that, give, create value from that for my kids. Simple driver. What were some negativity things driving me negative? I just got out the military and I don't know nothing about entrepreneurship. No, zero. I don't, I don't know anything about how to go sell this or make money or whatever it may be. So I lacked the knowledge, lacked the experience, and everybody who knew me at that time was like, man, you're doing something way different than what you've ever done for the last 10, 11 years. How are you going to do it? How are, you going to make, how are you going to make money for the first year and the first two years? All of that could have been a driver to say, you know what, dude, don't go do this. You got kids, you're married at the time. What are you doing? Figure this out. Go, go do something else. All of those negative drivers could have stopped me, right? Luckily, it didn't. 
had my first successful company in 2018 called Rock the Base, right? It's a live entertainment touring company catering specifically to the United States military, doing big concerts on military installations, right? Literally, success, right? Who can tell me how did I even get there? I didn't listen to the people who were giving me negative drivers. I would listen to what I wanted to do and what I cared about, which was find something else to do to bring value to my family. Simple as that, right? And allowing that driver to drive me through all those challenges, that was my entrepreneur mindset. That is how I established my entrepreneur spirit, right? And it hadn't stopped ever since. So if you guys can start looking at these examples for yourselves and identify what is this driver that's really going to cater, that you're going to cater to, something you can always go back to, to say, you know what, that's why I'm doing it, okay? So that's the entrepreneur spirit, all right? And this scorecard is going to help you with it. This video, I'm not going to share with you today, but I have the link to it after. There's another video that to help you kind of understand some of the processes and strategies that you can take to kind of move forward, okay? Um, so one other component, if you guys heard me, I've been talking about think, feel, act. You guys heard that yet since I've been talking? Right? Think, feel, act. Who can tell me what think, feel, and act is as it relates to us as human beings? What is think, feel, and act? Thinking first hmm? before you do something. Hmm? Thinking first before you do something. And then... For sure, for sure. But what are, what is it? Like, what exactly is thinking, feeling, and acting? What are they as they relate to us as human beings? Yes, for sure. That, that's, that's absolutely true. But I'm going to give it to you a little bit differently. Yes, we all know we can think, feel, and act. But did you know that without being able to think, feel, and act, we are not human beings? They are our core characteristics that separates us from being animals. Our core characteristics, right? Each of us have the ability to think, feel, and act upon how we think and feel, right? Can animals think? Yes. Can they feel? For sure. Can they act upon how they think and feel? Yes. But some of the challenges with animals is that one of the easiest things that happen is fight or flight, right? Fight or flight. We don't always go through fight or flight in all of our situations. We have the ability to have rationale, judgment, right? Perspective, acceptance of other perspectives, right? We have something uniquely different than what we are as human beings and what we are as animals. So if you look at, look at this a little bit differently, right? Thinking and feeling and acting is our core characteristics as human beings. Well, what about when you grow, when you're, when you're born into this world, right? Everyone is already teaching you how to think, right? From the moment you're born, you're taught how to think, you're taught how to feel, and you're taught how to act, right? They're different from your parents, from your teachers, from your family. You're developing, you're learning. You're in this development phase, right? So if no one here ever told you about entrepreneurship, i.e., I just told you, I didn't learn about it until I was 25. How many of you are 25? Anybody? Holy moly. That's crazy. You now know about entrepreneurship way before I did. So some part of my life, there was no development that ever talked to me about entrepreneurship or the knowledge or the understanding or whatever it may be, right? So I don't have control of that, right? You don't have control here from what ages? Zero to what? When are we, when are we developing with our parents and stuff like that? Zero to what? Maybe 19, 20, right? When did you leave your parents' house? Or not leave. When did you decide to go off and go to college? What age? 19? 21? <laughs> what about you? 17? 18? 17, right? All different times, right? So what if someone told you what I'm telling you now and more that I'm going to tell you over this program, what if I told you all this stuff at age 10? Wouldn't you be thinking, feeling, and acting differently than what you do today, right? If I told you at age 10, you would start to be like, what? No one told me that before. Really? 
can I really do something? Can I really make money? Can I really do something with my skills? Can I really do something with my abilities? Can I really build a company? Age 10, I can start to do that. You can start to think differently now. You start to question everything that you've been going through. Who remembers that time period where your parents told you to do something, but then you're like age 13, 14, 15, and then you're like, I don't think I want to do that anymore. Who remembers the time where they went against their parents or went against a way of thinking that they were always told? Has anyone ever been through that process? Done something differently than what you were, or what you were told to do? Yeah? Give me one example. Yep. Someone was like, no? Yeah. Right? And you're like, nah, I want to, right? And you did, right? We've all been through that phase where at some point we have to learn how to adjust, do things differently than what we've ever done before. And that's what entrepreneurship is all about. If you think you can do the same thing and be the same person, that is not the way of entrepreneurship. You have to adjust. You have to want to grow yourself, grow your knowledge, grow your experience, grow your perspective, right? And then at some point, you are the only person making all the decisions, right? So even though you left your home at 17, 17, 19, 21, right? When did you stop? When did you end up having to make all your own decisions? Or do you guys all make all your own decisions today? Every single decision, right? Probably not. not probably not every single decision, right? What about you? You make every single decision right now? For yourself, right? So at some point, that wasn't pot, that wasn't the case, right? At some point. And then eventually, it happens. You start making your own decisions, right? Doing things differently, acting differently, thinking differently, all of it's up to you, right? That level of development is what I'm asking you guys to start inherently, inherently building into yourself right now, right? Because you cannot be a college student right now in school hyper-focus on your degree and then want to pursue entrepreneurship but not make different decisions. Not think differently about how you're going to spend your time, how you're going to spend your attention, right? Because if you say you're going to give something your time, you better give it your attention, right? And if you're going to give something your time and attention and you're looking to build an idea, you better be willing to figure out how you're going to have some money for that idea. Because the money is going to be needed to move that idea forward. Right? So if you're getting paid today from the work that you do, but not even 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%, 5% goes towards your business, towards your idea, then you're not betting on yourself that this idea is even possible. Why could someone else want to buy your product, your service, or your technology? Right? At some point, you've got to make the decision. I wanted you guys to see this from a different perspective. Thinking, feeling, acting, we all go through it, but as entrepreneurs, we manage it differently, we do it differently, we think about it a little bit differently. We go through the process of using these characteristics a little bit differently than the everyday person. So I'm going to give you guys, who knows about Jack Ma? Who knows who Jack Ma is? OK. There's a short video that I want to share with you guys about who Jack Ma is. If you don't know who Jack Ma is, I, on the back of here is a little story of who he is. This is a founder story that I want to share with you. A person who never thought he was going to be an entrepreneur, but ended up becoming one of the uh, most you know, successful men in the world, most, definitely one of the most successful men in China, definitely one of the largest businesses in the world. Do you guys know what Alibaba is? Yeah? That's Jack Ma. Huh? Which one? Yeah. Yeah, Alibaba. Yeah, I'm going to show you with you what Alibaba is right now. But all the products you think about with Sheen, you ever heard of Sheen? The company Sheen, yeah, that's always pushing clothing and products and stuff like that. You heard that new one, Temu. You see, the, you see, you see it on, on TikTok all the time right now, T-E-M-U, yeah? you never seen any of that yet? Okay, I'm not even on social media and I've seen it, guys. I have no TikTok account, okay? Um, but these products and these companies, their strategies of learning how to push product from one country to the next country, the strategies have all been built through some of the best processes that Jack Ma built into Alibaba. So watch this story real quick. I want to share with you in about three minutes the history of Alibaba. Okay.
So, for those who did not know, who remembers when the internet started? What year did the internet start, right, publicly? Who, who knows? What time? <laughs> Which time? 98. Not 98, a little earlier. 96. A little earlier. 90? 1993, uh, when it was public to everyone. Prior to that, military government had access to the technology of the internet, right? But in 1993, Jack Ma heard about the internet in China and was like, what is that thing called internet? What is that thing called internet? Today, it's so commonplace, right? But what is that thing called internet? It sounds interesting. But I don't know what it's going to do. I have no idea. But what do I want to do? I want to learn a little bit more about that. He was a teacher at the time, right, teaching you know, high school. He worked for Kentucky Fried Chicken at one point in time, right? And the challenge was is that no one really else cared about the internet. No one else was talking about it in China. It wasn't a thing. So he flew over to the US, learned a little bit about what it was, and went back. So when you guys saw the video started, he was talking to people in his apartment, right? Those were partners and friends and people that he thought that he could share this information with. And it was about 19 people in the room, right? Maybe I got the number wrong, about 19, 20 people in the room. And he asked his friends, he said, look, I don't know much about this, but I'm going to be, I'm going to learn about it. And I think we could really do something with this thing called the internet, right? What can we do with it? We could potentially, potentially do things like this. Take our products, ship them to other countries. We can have it on the internet where other people can see our products, purchase our products, all of that, right? Thinking about it, but not knowing what the actual outcome could possibly be. As we talked earlier, you don't know what the outcome is, but you know something sounds interesting, right? So what ended up happening, out of those 19 people, how many people do you think actually jumped on board? None? That would be horrible to have friends and nobody jump on board. Whew. They say you were friends, buddy. Give me a number. Give me a number. How many people do you think jumped on board? About three? I think it was about three. OK? Three people. And each of those three called them crazy. By the way, they said, you're crazy, but I'm willing to join you. All the other people were like, you're crazy, and I'm not going to join you. OK? So as we saw the story of Alibaba, right, we saw every year. You guys remember the thing called SARS? Yeah. Right? SARS, like 2000, 2001, also during the time period where we were dealing with war in the US. Right? But SARS was happening the same thing as the pandemic as we have right now. Right? Big challenge in China, huge. It was tearing up you know, the whole country, right? And even the world, it actually you know, traveled across the world, right? So he'd been through SARS, been through war, all the challenges between partnerships and global opportunities, been through multiple different um, uh, iterations of the company. As you saw at one point in time when SARS came up, they couldn't ship certain things, so they were able to build a whole nother technology sector in the company to be able to build a better e-commerce thing where they could actually show people products and they can pre-order products, right? Think about that. And then today, you saw one of the, one of the, video, one of, uh, the options in the video was uh, the warehouse, all using robots, right? We heard about that about Amazon. Everything Amazon got information from, right? Alibaba was doing these things way before, right? You think about going to the grocery store and being able to scan a product and get information about a product on your phone. That was already being done at some of the grocery stores in, in China and out from Alibaba, right? Being innovative. Yes, sir. So Alibaba is like a multi-vendor superstore for everything, mm -hmm. which I know it as. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, then how is Amazon successful? If it's the same business model, is it just because it's in a different country? A lot of times, right? But operationally, right, Amazon does things that our country, or that companies just cannot do. They just don't have the knowledge or understanding, but they have their own methodologies, right? I mean, they have so certain principles that they stand by that keeps things going and keeping them afloat, right? I know one thing that's really unique about them is that if you go into a meeting, you don't go into a meeting with PowerPoint presentations. You go into a meeting with actual documents that look like that, six pages of what you thought about the ideas and the products that people are talking about. And you talk about five, 10 people with six pages of documents, and the meeting doesn't end until those, everyone goes through their documents. 
right? And then they go through and start doing red pinning and figuring out what the right solution really is. That's a methodology that not a lot of people do, but they are so on to that, that may be what usually keeps them above, the, above par, right? But it doesn't mean you can't do something similar, right? Everybody wants to create the next Amazon, but you can't create the next Amazon. You can do similar things and have your own methodologies and create a better version of what you want even during the similar processes, right? So the reason why I wanted to show you guys those things is because we've been talking about it, the entrepreneur mindset, the entrepreneur spirit. Now you've identified kind of what the journey of an entrepreneur is like. Even though you may not know him, he's from China, it doesn't matter. The journey of an entrepreneur is always gonna have those unknowns, those uncertains, and the things that are unfamiliar, you never know what the process is gonna be, you just gotta go through it, right? So I wanted to share that with you guys. If you get a chance, read about it. I, I printed it out for you so you can have it. Ask me more questions about it, and I'll share you more about the story. Um, but to continue building your personal manifesto, right? We started with one. For those who weren't here, you'll have access to the documents later. But the second manifesto I want you to do is your entrepreneur spirit manifesto, right? Write about a moment when you decided that you wanted to become an entrepreneur or gain entrepreneurial skills. Obviously, you're here in this class for a reason. You don't pay for this class. This is a free class. It's all available to you, right? You're here versus somewhere else. Maybe your friends ask you to be somewhere. Maybe you're playing basketball right now before the sun goes down, right? Possibly, but you're not, you're here. So why are you here? What is the reason behind gaining this knowledge and this understanding? Because that's gonna be something that's gonna to continue to drive you for the steps that you're gonna take as you go through the rest of the program. For those who don't go through the rest of the program, right? you're at least gonna walk away with the perspective of why these skills may be important to you and how they're going to be able to be utilized and implemented, either you go work for a company or start building your own ideas on your own, right? So if you get the time, write about it, be honest to yourself about what it is, and then allow that to be something that's gonna drive you moving forward. And we'll always talk about it throughout the rest of the program, okay? So next step, so we have some more time. We're gonna go through about two more. I'm not gonna go through everything on the entrepreneur journey because we talked a lot about it just a moment ago, but I'm gonna give you guys a lot of perspective of what the entrepreneur journey really is, okay? So who's heard about the entrepreneur journey? Yeah? Anyone ever heard the term entrepreneur journey? Right? So if you've heard about it, right, what do you guys think about it? What do you think it means? Right? Think about a doctor's journey, the journey of becoming a doctor, an engineer's journey, the journey of becoming an engineer, right? Think about um, a nurse or whatever it may be. There's always steps that you gotta go through to end up with the end result of something, right? There's always a process. And that process begins way before you actually start. There's a mindset about it, right? Something has to drive you to begin and then you actually start. And that's when you begin that journey. No different than an entrepreneur. Once you say you're an entrepreneur and you start deciding that you're gonna go through that process of entrepreneurship, that's when you start to begin that entrepreneur journey. So today's class, we talked about kickstarting your entrepreneur journey. Right, we say that because you're a college student, you're an anteater, right? So as an anteater, you got college to focus on. You also probably have life situations going on. Maybe there's relationships going on. Maybe you have kids, maybe you have a job. <clears throat> Maybe you have a career going on at the same time pursuing college, right? There's a lot of other stuff going on, and if you want to add entrepreneurship to that, you're adding another journey to your life. How are you going to do what? We talked about it earlier. Manage your time, manage your attention, manage the money necessary to be able to pursue those ideas and those goals, and the risk you're taking is that you're added another journey on top of your life's journey. How are you going to go through the process, right? So if you can have a definition, because there's no true definition of what an entrepreneur journey is, there's a lot of perspective. If you can put a definition to it, here's what I've been able to put in, put in a structure for you. It is the process taken to become an entrepreneur, right? The entrepreneur's journey is the process taken to become an entrepreneur from ideation of the idea, the problem you wanna solve, to the implementation of whatever it is you thought was gonna be the solution that you're gonna to provide to that problem, right? Of a business idea, it could just be an idea. It could be a strategy, you work for an organization, you're thinking more entrepreneurial. How can we do things better within the organization, a strategy? 
or an objective, right? To sell a product or a service or even a technology or a mixture of all of them, right? This is a way where you can use this definition to keep you on par of what it is that you're doing. You're going through a process of the unknown. There's lots of uncertainty, there's lots of unfamiliarity, but you're going to go through this ideation process, you're going to make changes along the way, and eventually the goal as an entrepreneur is to implement the ideas and the strategies that you put in place to potentially have value back, right? Value for you, value for your customer, right? Value back to the world, wherever you're actually doing. It's going to come in a form of a product, service, or technology, or a mixture of the three, okay? So understanding the entrepreneur journey, you gotta also know where you are right now, okay? So I'm gonna give you guys perspective of how you guys can look at your lives, of how you, where you are right now as it relates to the potential opportunity to pursue entrepreneurship through the entrepreneur journey, right? Everything has a beginning and an end, just so you know, right? Every business gets started, at some point, businesses have an end, okay? Our lives begin, our lives end. Throughout that process of beginning and end, as it relates to entrepreneurship, we have to think about a couple different things. We talked about earlier, time spent pursuing the process of entrepreneurship, money used to pursue the, the process of entrepreneurship, and the potential risk taken to pursue entrepreneurship. Depending on when you actually start that process, right, is when you start to realize how much time and money and risk you have, right? So who knows what score means as it relates to a number? What is a score? From a numerical standpoint, not from a gaming standpoint, what is a score? What's a score? Right, if a dozen is 12, a score is what? If a couple is two, a score is what? 20, 20 right? 20, right? You ever heard four scores seven years ago? Oh, okay, all the American stuff that we like, yeah? Okay, think about it from, we only get about five scores in our life, guys, to be honest with you. We get about five scores in our lives. What you have learned, we talked about it earlier, when you're born between the ages of zero and when you left your parents' house, when we talked about it, you were being taught everything, were you not? You were learning, doing a lot of development, a lot of understanding, a lot of gaining your awareness, gaining a perspective. A lot of that was delivered to you by the environment that you were in, and the people who were able to be influential in your environment, and eventually you started to figure out what it is that you want to step into. When you decided to come to UCI, right, or when you decided to step away from your mom's house, right, at some point, what happened? You had only a couple options. You only have a couple options. You got four options, right? You wanna pursue higher education or go to college? That's one thing. Wanna have a job or a career? You could've started early. You could've got a career. Some people get careers early. You see those little 11 year old kids getting hired by Google? Like what? 11 year old kid? Shidra was one of them. Smart kids getting hired by Google really early. How are you gonna get a career so early, okay? Some of us don't get that opportunity. What about job? Maybe you started a job at 17. Like you said, you guys walked out at 17, right? Okay, 17, you started a job. Start making money. You want to stay in that job. Nine to five, career, depends. Okay, cool, entrepreneurship. I'm not gonna to go to school, I'm not gonna get a job. I'm gonna pursue entrepreneurship. You probably only knew about that because someone told you about it earlier on. And you're like, hey, I might think I wanna do something like that. What about higher education? Right? What about unemployment? You all are choosing higher education. How many are you higher in higher education and unemployed at the moment? Right? It's challenging, is it not, to be and do both. Right? Now imagine being unemployed, higher education, and trying to be an entrepreneur. Holy moly. It's an added journey, right? Imagine being in a career right now, working for a company, creating a lot of value for the company, but then you come up with an idea and you want to then pursue building your company, imagine that, right? What I'm trying to get you guys to think about is that right now between the ages of 20 and 40, which all of you are over the age of 20 as I think we just talked about, right? This is where you have the most time in your life to pursue the process, to go through the unknown, 
to go through the challenges, right? The uncertainties. This is where you have the most time to invest in your life. And the reason why I'm saying that is not because of it, everything is, like we said, it's not the status quo that I'm going to say. I'm just giving you perspective. Between 20 and 40 and becoming 40 years of age, at some point, money is the most important thing and the most biggest focus on your life. Why? You want to retire. You want to kind of relax and know that you can not have to work so hard and do certain things. So between 40 and 60, by economic standards, this is where you should have gained the most amount of money between 20 and 60 that you're going to gain in your life. The most amount of money. People do become very successful and make a lot of money after 60. That's not an issue. But most people are going to make the most amount of money they're going to ever make throughout the rest of their life between 20 and 60. And if that's so true, what are you doing with that, right? If you want to pursue entrepreneurship, how are you actually managing your own stuff to give yourself the best chance to go through the process, right? That's what we're trying to get you to think because other things start to kick in. You need a job. You need a career so you can sustain the lifestyle that you have, right? Sustain, maintain, keep whatever you want to call it. But certain things become more important than your ideas being pursued. Family becomes important. Maybe you want a family. Maybe you spent your 20s all the way to your 40s not worrying about family, focus on career, focus on growing your net worth, all that great stuff. And now you want to do some things. That's cool. Your decisions. But then you have to determine what's more important to you when you turn 40, right? What's important to you when you turn 40? What's, what's even, have you even thought about it? Right? So a foundation for a family is highly important at 40. And now you're what age? 18. 18. What should you be doing now? Right? It's a simple, simple question you have to ask yourself. Right? If I want this at this particular time, what is the process, the things that I must be doing along the way? Right? And the reason why I'm giving you guys this now is as an entrepreneur, when you start adding this entrepreneur process onto your life's journey, now you have to reorganize the way you think and the way you feel and the way that you act upon the way how you think and feel and do, right? This is what this is all about, okay? So the other thing is, is that as you get older, 60 to 80, right, other things become more of a risk for you, right? It's not saying that you are going to be unhealthy, but health becomes challenging. We, we are human beings, right? We are not meant to live forever. <laughs> We're not meant to live forever. Other things start to become a problem, right? Family dynamics. You want a family. You have a family. You got kids, whatever you want to call it. Things become more important, right? So entrepreneurship becomes less part of the life that you want to have, right? Retirement, lifestyle, all of that. And then, you know, at some point between 80 and 100 years of age is when most of us human beings, we move on to the next life. Right? We have a lot of people who have lived older, but you know, they're not pursuing entrepreneurship as new founders and building startups, right? That's not what they're doing. So if you guys are really thinking about what you want to do, start planning on where that time period is and thinking about what you need to do now, right? With the time, attention, right? Money and risk that you're going to take along the way. I'm going to give you guys this too, but you can definitely take a screenshot of this. Play with it, adjust it. Create value for yourself. Identify where you want to be and start figuring out how you can take some of those steps toward it. Okay? Like I said, all videos are going to be given to you in a resource. So don't worry about the videos. But the videos are associated to just adding more and enhancing what we're thinking about. <coughs> so we're going to play one last, one last game. And I think this will kind of solve a lot for everyone. Is when we talked about time and we talked about attention, we talked about money, we talk about risk. What my goal is today for you is for you who wants to pursue the process of entrepreneurship, I want you to start thinking differently about how you manage your time, attention, money, and risk. I want to give you guys a few minutes to look at this called the management game. We've been talking about time, attention, money, and risk this whole time. What I want you to do is there are about 25, what is there, 20 phrases here um, that are associated to the management game. They're all associated to time management, attention management, money management, and risk management. Okay? What I would like for you guys to do is put a T or an A or an M or an R 
by whichever one you think relates to that management perspective, okay? I'll give you guys two minutes to do that, and then we'll move on. There's no wrong answer here. The only way it's wrong is because I have it in a particular order, but I don't care about if you have it in a particular order. I just want to see how many you've gotten in a particular space so I can see where your perspective is. That's all I want to do from this. Okay. So for those who have to go, because we did start a little bit late, it is 6.30. Um, just make sure you're keeping timing. Uh, we should be finished within about 10, 20 minutes max. Excuse me. <clears throat> All right. Keep going. We got two minutes left. Or not two minutes. We got one minute left. Thirty seconds. Okay, guys, so I'm just going to go through um, these areas. I might pick one that we'll talk about in each uh, variable, but um, I'm going to go through them real quickly. The purpose of this is just to look at different things that you will have to actually associate to time management, money management, risk management, and attention management. Okay, It will help you start to think differently do differently, and act differently as you start to add entrepreneurship to your life's journey, okay? So one thing under time management, or let's do all five. So all five, right? So if you are a great time manager, amazing. I am a okay time manager. <laughs> Okay, time manager. I have lots of other things going on, so I manage so many different projects. I manage being here as well and building programs and working here at the Entrepreneur Center and doing amazing stuff. But I also have other things going on in my life as an entrepreneur, as a father, right? There's so many other stuff going on that I manage time differently, but I'm not the best time manager because I've always had so much freedom in the time that I've allotted myself that I'm more flexible with my time. I'm willing to have things 
go up, go down, because I usually have most of the control of that. But when you don't control all of your own time, you have to figure out new strategies to make sure you're associating that and how it impacts other people as well. But as an entrepreneur pursuing something, you have an idea you want to get off the ground to bring to fruition, you got to figure out how to do a couple of things. One of them that I want to talk about is learn to just say no. What do you guys think I mean by that? Learn to just say no. What am I saying with that? Yes, sir. Like, sacrificing, like, like you said, people want to like, hang out or play video games or something like that. You know, yeah. You focus on what you're trying to build. So, and nothing's wrong with making sure that if you have your academic journey going on, your entrepreneur journey going on, you better have a social life going on too. You better have a social life. Entrepreneurship gets real lonely real quick because you're doing your own thing. No one knows you're doing your own thing, right? So it gets lonely very, very quick. And one of the craziest issues that we have in entrepreneurship is loneliness, imposter syndrome, things like that because we're battling against ourselves. That's it, right? I want to get this done, so I'm going to spend hours on top of hours to get it done, right? We'll talk about it a little bit, yeah. So the process of becoming something that you're not. You can't say you're an entrepreneur today. You can say you are an entrepreneur from an entrepreneur perspective. But the end result of an entrepreneur is someone who is actually creating the value of something of a problem that they fix or a solution that they have provided, right? The difference is, is that process of entrepreneurship is no different than your degrees you're taking. You can't say you are your degree major, or, or the, you don't say you have your degree unless you receive the certificate, right? But there's no certificate for entrepreneurship. No one's just giving you things because you go through school and go through the process, right? End result of entrepreneurship is not to just have the knowledge, it's to actually be able to implement, right? So when I say learn to say no, that means people are gonna ask for your time. Everything is gonna ask for your time. How do you end up saying no to certain things that are taking too much time from you where you could be spending some of that time on your idea, on your business, with your team, right? That's what I want you guys to think about. All the other ones are just as important, such as delegating and outsourcing. One, th one thing that I had a tro uh, trouble with in the beginning was delegating. Because I wanted to build on my own, I started delegating. I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't delegate very much because I wanted to do it on my own at first. So that was a big, big challenge. But you have to learn how to delegate, right? So attention. So here's the five under, under attention. <coughs> the one thing I wanted to go over was design your environments. Who knows what I mean by design your environments? I was stuck on that one. I didn't really understand. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yes, sir. Like choose who you A, like, want to be with. Mm -hmm. Very true, very, very true. The environment is so important. If you are on your phone, on the iPad, have the iPad playing music, right? Have the TV on, you have four friends in the, in the building, how are you giving attention to your idea? If that's what's supposed to be the time you committed to. I'm gonna work on my idea today. It's gonna be at five o'clock to six o'clock, but everybody's over right now, <laughs> right? You didn't even eat. Your, your stomach is hungry, right? It's growling, you're like, man, but you're giving it this your time, but other things are distracting you, right? Environments are so important. What about the environment, the people that are around you that are telling you, you're not gonna be an entrepreneur. You, know, you don't even know anything about entrepreneurship. Your family doesn't know nothing about entrepreneurship. Nobody's been successful in entrepreneurship. It's a struggle, it's a challenge. What about all of those people in your lives? They encompass in your, they're, they're, they're in your environment, at some point, at some point, that will destroy you. To not have a positive well-being, a positive, I'm sorry, a positive, well-structured environment around you to give you not only the confidence, the motivation, but to give you the freedom and space and energy to be able to pursue something, right? To give something your full, undivided attention, right? When, when was the last time, and this is not really a question to answer, it's really more like thinking about it. When is the last time you gave something your full attention and you were looking for an outcome 
and you were actually able to get that outcome. Without, without going through the story, can anyone raise their hand? They've done that recently or done that previously. We gave something your full attention and you actually got the outcome you were looking for. Yeah? If you haven't been through that process, that is something you should be pursuing. Because entrepreneurship is about going through that process. And you're going to go through a lot of the process, a lot of changes, a lot of iterations. And you still feel like you're getting closer to the end goal, but you're not really there yet. And sometimes you may not reach that goal because you're on the same path, right? That is a challenge. That stops you from doing things. That, that, get, that just gets, gets discouraging, right? That's something we want to make sure is not stopping you from moving through your journey. What about money management, right? So here's the five out of the 20, right? The one I want you to go after is to save early and often. For those who are making any kind of money right now and have an idea for, that they want to bring to the market, pursue, put their time and attention to, it's going to cost you money. So any little of money put to the side to put towards your idea could really help out. Imagine this, what if you needed software? And software costs you, it's called $16 a month, but it costs you like a $220 a year to get the software, right? But if you got the software today, and it's the software you need, and it was $80 today, and you have a week, you have a week to, to purchase this before they close that window, would you go and figure out how to get $80? It's the software you need. If you have it, you're going to be able to move your ideas forward. But it costs you 80 bucks and you don't have it right now. Would you figure out how to get that money? Right? That's no different than anything you're going to do throughout the whole process of your business. You're not going to always have the money. Why do you think people go after investment? Why do you think people looking for mom and dad to actually used to be their early investors? Why do you think family and friends are going to be early investors, right? People don't always have the money, which is one of the biggest barriers in entrepreneurship. So if you are making any money right now, the goal is take a percentage from it. Always look at the 100%. Take 8%. Whatever that percent is, just be consistent with it. Because at some point, you're going to need money, and you're not going to necessarily have the money, but you would have saved that money, and that money would be able to be used for your idea. It's going to come a time where you need it, you're going to need it, and you don't have it. And that's going to be detrimental to your growth and ability to move forward. If you can ask someone for it, that also means getting it. You can ask. Someone's willing to give it to you. But do you know who that person is? Do you know where that money is coming from? Right? That's what you have to identify early. If you can't do it for yourself, where can you go get it? If you can begin saving now, save as early as possible, even if it's 10 bucks, 20 bucks, because eventually that adds up to enough money to go execute. Okay? That's the same way you have to think about it. If you learn to save early and often, guess what makes investors really happy when you actually have a viable business that they're willing to invest in? They can feel very comfortable because you know money. You understand how to manage something else that was not there before and was growing, right? An investor wants their return, but what if you spend all their return because you're so used to just spending the money, right? You never pay them back. They're not going to be willing to invest in you, right? So having that kind of methodology and trusting yourself in that gives you a better opportunity if you're pursuing investment for your company. How about the last one, risk management, right? So one of the things I want to talk about here is identifying barriers. Man, everybody's barriers are different. <laughs> no one's is really the same. You guys are all college students. That's one barrier that you have in common, but you all are on all different academic journeys. So no one's journey is absolutely the same, right? You may be taking 22 credits this, this quarter. You may be taking 12. Different journey. Probably in the same class, uh, same, same degree program, but different journey, right? Since that's so true, you're taking different risk. Your barrier may be that you got to go to work, so you're only taking 12. Your barrier may be is that I have more time, 
and I've actually just put too much more of my academic journey on my schedule, but I want to pursue this idea. Everybody's barrier is different. How can you eliminate some of those barriers, but first you have to identify them, right? Maybe some of those barriers are people. Certain people in your lives keep telling you, ah, you're not going to do this. You can't make it. You can't be an entrepreneur. Why do you want to be an entrepreneur? All this mindset stuff that they keep playing with you. Maybe that's a barrier. How do you remove that barrier? Right? All I want you guys to think about is as you start to pursue this process of entrepreneurship, what is some barriers in your way? Identify them, put them in an order of influence in your life and impact, and try to remove them out of your way. Because the faster you start to remove barriers out of your way, personally, you will start to learn what it's like to remove barriers out of your way when you're building your business. It's a strategy. Go ahead, sir. Um, I definitely know what you mean when you said sometimes people are the biggest barriers. Mm -hmm. uh, it's no secret that some people don't want to see you do better than them. And Absolutely. They want to give you constructive criticism. And sometimes it's hard to decipher the difference. Like, how would you filter out and really know, okay, is this person trying to help me or are they like trying to hinder me? They don't want to see my idea. Absolutely. You will know that person, and that person kind of came into your life somehow. If that person came into your life in a very positive way, you should probably look at everything that they are saying in a critical way, right? A positive, critical way, right? They're just a, a feedback way. If someone came into your life just via just engagement, via whatever, and they have no true impact on you in their decision, and they're speaking, and they're speaking to you in this, this negative perspective, maybe there's some truths in their negative, but you're not willing to hear it. So you take every single negative and you cycle it through your positive perspective. That's why I was saying earlier, what is a positive driver that keeps you going? If they can't impact that positive driver, then nothing they say is actually going to stop you from doing what you're doing. But at least you can see, maybe there's something truth in what they're saying, but let me dig a little deeper. I know they're not able to impact my positive driver, right? So that's just one way to look at it. I don't ever look at negativity throughout the process, like when people are speaking to me, because they're not going through the journey with me. right? If, if, I, if I have a partner and they're going through it with me, I take everything they say as a positive critique, right? a positive critique that may sound negative. But if you're not with me on the journey and you don't go through the process with me and I value your opinion, I'm going to take it again as a positive. But if I don't value your opinion or you don't, your opinion just doesn't have meaning to me, right? I mean, not that I don't value it, it's just that I don't know you well enough to even know how to take your opinion, then you just take the criticism for what it is. And either you accept it and take little gold nuggets or you just push it away, right? So everybody deals with it a lot differently. For me, I've been through enough of those challenges to know how I deal with it. And I just don't let anything that anyone says negative, it does not actually impact me at all. Right? So I've been able to go off of those experiences. So remember when I said earlier, right about a time where you've been through some crazy moments and you were able to get through it, sometimes that's the moment where someone says something that you could do something and you actually did it. Reminding yourself that you actually did something that someone said you couldn't do also helps you through this process when someone says something that you cannot do again. Right? That's the way, that's the mind game you got to play with yourself. And that's what I meant by entrepreneur mindset. You, you use those moments to remind yourself, I've been there, done that, right? So that's one way to think about it. Um, any other questions on this one at all, OK? So I just wanted to play this game so that you guys can really think about it. How are you using some of these or creating your own methodologies to manage your time, manage your attention, manage your money, and, and the risks that you're taking to pursue entrepreneurship, OK? Uh, what I would like for you to do is this one here is write about a time when, you're, uh, when you had to complete a certain task with limited resources, such as time and money. Right? So you guys are going to get this. I'm going to give you access to a resource. But this is also goes on to your personal manifesto. Being able to do things with limited resources and actually accomplish it, it's an amazing feat. Think about it right now. You guys are in school. Who's a, who's, who's a freshman? 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 Who is that, junior, junior, sophomore, senior? Where are you? Senior. I know you're an international student, but what, what, what year? I'm an exchange student, so I'm, like, it's, I'm only here for two quarters. For two quarters, right? So two quarters. What about you? <laughs> I, I'm, uh, I graduated a long time ago. Oh, grad. So, grad, so you're alumni, right? So you, oh, you graduated already a long time ago, right? So everybody is at different stages. Right? 
you've been able to figure out if you've accomplished something with limited time and limited money. I'm sure at some point you needed money and you weren't able to get it, but you were able to get something done. I'm sure you had no time to get something done, but eventually figured it out how to get it done. These moments in our lives are such valuable moments to not forget. You have to have them on the top of your head because in entrepreneurship, there's always a challenge. It's always hitting you hard. And when you can go back to a moment, when you can remind yourself of something like that, it's going to be so valuable to help you move yourself, move yourself forward, okay? So you guys are right about that in your manifesto. So we talked about these challenges, right? Lack of capital, lack of experience. You know, in your market, maybe there's existing competition, right? Maybe the commitment, time commitment's a lot, right? What about the risk of failure, right? Stress and uncertainty. These are just six, right? Six of these, the, the, the standard things that I could think of that I wanted to share with you guys is never going to go away. You're never going to have enough money for your business. Never. You're going to always need more to sustain. You're going to always need more to grow. You're going to need more to scale, right? You're going to need more <coughs> to, to be able to just get off the ground, right? Competition's always there. You can never say you don't have competition. There's always somebody watching. Even if they are a market share leader and you're doing some amazing stuff, they're watching you. Why? Because they have resources. They have people. They have time. They have money that they can put toward this new thing that you created and they can trump you very quickly, right? What about someone watching you get in? They figured out how to get in behind you because they had a little bit more resource. They had the technology. They're an expert. They just needed to see someone do it first. They're watching. There's always going to be competition, right? Even when you're having to maintain and success, someone's watching. How are they doing it? We should do it too, and then let's add this to be a little bit different. People are always there, right? These things are always there. The risk of failure is always there. Time commitment's always there. So I just want you guys to see these challenges that are there. Put some things in front of them. Create opportunities to feel comfortable going through these challenges because they're gonna be consistent. But as you go through the stages of these challenges, you're learning and proving to yourself that you can actually get through the process, right? That's all it is that want you see. But if you got challenges, we obviously take on these challenges to pursue these opportunities. So the opportunities I want to show you guys real quick, just a few opportunities, six opportunities I think are reasons why people pursue entrepreneurship, right? Have more flexibility, right? Use their creativity, right? Establish independence, financial reward. There's lots of people who just want to do it to make money. That's okay. Who wants to do you know, big business to make money? I mean, who wants to be an entrepreneur just to make money? Maybe not just to make money, but you want to make money, right? But there's some people who's like, you know what? I just want to make money. I don't care about nothing else. I don't impact. I just want to make some money. Why? Because I've never had enough money. I want to make more money. That's okay to have that mindset, but what are you going to do with that mindset? How are you going to build? What kind of business will you build with that? You have to be honest with yourself, right? What about personal fulfillment? Maybe it's just, you know what, I've been through a lot of stuff. I've started the companies before, or I've already been through some successes. I just really like this. I want to do it again. I want to do it again and again and again, right? Or I just want to be fulfilled. I want to feel like I actually accomplished something. That's okay, okay? What about developing a network, right? Maybe you don't want to do business today, but you want to gain a lot of skills and understanding so that when you do, you know how to communicate that to people who could possibly help you, right? That's highly important, right? So these are some opportunities that you can think about. List your own opportunities that you're searching for and see if you can kind of measure up your life structure, the, the process you're going to go through after seeking those opportunities, right? I told you guys before, one of the things that drove me was I just had kids. I wanted to do something different. I wanted to provide a different lifestyle. So therefore, I knew entrepreneurship was the only way I could do that. So that's why I pursued entrepreneurship, OK? So. There are only two more things I'm going to share with you real quick. Self-awareness. Self-awareness is very simple. We talked all about it today. Okay? Since I'm going to give you the presentation, I'm going to fly through this one. But self-awareness has already been defined. All of us have our own versions of self-awareness, our own understandings and own perspectives. But having self-awareness will also help you become more, more aware of others. So remember when you asked me, what, how do you deal with other people? Be more self-aware, first and foremost. How do you take criticism? How do you take people's perspectives? Right? Everybody has their own perspective. But what do you do with that perspective, right? Self-awareness means conscious knowledge of knowing one's own characters, feelings, motives, and desires. 
But also, if you're more self-aware and you know your own motives and desires, you will know the motives of others. You can identify it much quicker, okay? So another thing to do is practice self-awareness. How do you practice self-awareness? Use this scorecard that I'm going to show you, right? Very, very simple. I say simple because I want you guys to think about it simple, but it's not simple, okay? I want, I want you to think about how easy it is to begin the process, right? Yep. Be open. Tell people, like you said earlier, tell people about what you want to do. Be open, right? Be authentic. Tell them why you want to do it, why it's important to you, right? Be mindful. Be mindful that, you know what, not everybody's going to want to help you. Not everyone's going to want to contribute. Not everyone can contribute. Not everyone wants to listen to your entrepreneurial stories. Not everybody wants to provide uh, resources, right? Whatever it may be, be mindful of others, right? Because those people, there's some people that may want to hang out and just be along your journey until you have success. And hey, I, put, I was here, let me get a little piece of that. There's all kind of people like that, right? So just be mindful of the people around you, right? But also be mindful of yourself. Be resilient. As we've been talking this whole time, things are going to push, 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 push against you. How do you push back? Right? How do you push back? Um, the other one, that, so another video that you're going to get access to. It's amazing. So the deliverable I want you to add to your personal manifesto is to write about your best skills and attributes and abilities. You should do this. If you don't know what your best skills, attributes, and abilities are, how can you explain them to somebody else? How can you be the right founder for the kind of company that you want to build? What skills do you bring to the table? What skills do you not have, right? Also write about areas where you lack knowledge, right? What skills don't you have? Because the skills that you don't have, if you can work on them, yeah, go ahead, do that. But guess what? If you can find someone else to maximize that area that you lack, perfect. Bring them onto the team. Now you have a reason to understand why someone else can or cannot join you, right? If you have a plethora of skills, well, figure out how you can delegate some of that to other people who have a better desire for it or abilities to, to, move, uh, to move things forward, right? So that's good. So you guys are going to do that. The last thing I want to talk to you about is self-design. We've mentioned imposter syndrome, right? If you haven't done something, but you want to be something and become something, it is very hard to tell people around you that you want to do that. Hey, I want to be a doctor. Well, you ain't even gone to school yet, man. Well, I want to be a doctor. Well, I, I don't see how you're going to do it. People will tell you that very quickly. But you tell yourself you want to be a doctor, then you better believe you got to go through the process of becoming a doctor, right? No different than entrepreneurship. In entrepreneurship, this is one of the, I said one of the other things were, um, was loneliness. Entre um, um, when we talk about imposter syndrome, I believe it's like the second worst thing. Loneliness is the first, honestly. Because you're doing something all by yourself. You're the only one who can critique yourself and get yourself from one step to another. But what if you are also telling yourself, well, freak, man, I got here, but man, I'm not really an entrepreneur yet. Man, I'm, I can't even call myself that. I don't think I, I haven't had enough success yet. Uh, man, my program that I'm building is not the right program. Man, my product is not the right product. Everyone's telling me that I got to build something different. Imposter syndrome kicks in. So this is where self-design starts to be something that you can utilize to understand that imposter syndrome is part of the process. You are not an entrepreneur today. You're becoming an entrepreneur. You're establishing yourself. So it's OK to be someone that you're not. No one's going to grade you. No one's going to give you a quiz. No one's going to give you a midterm. No one cares. It's up to you. So it's for you to design yourself to be the best version of yourself. That's what self-design is. The process in which you prepare in becoming the highest and truest expression of yourself, whatever that may be for you. Right? It's the process taken. Right? So here's a way that you can help yourself through that process. Right? Another scorecard. First thing, attitude. Show it, man. I want to be an entrepreneur. Carry that attitude every single day. Why? Because an entrepreneur has to have that because the moment that, they're, that you don't have it, someone's going to go and give you their attitude. It's very, very easy for someone to look at you and say, mm -mm, no, 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 I don't believe it. But if you tell them every single day and you always are walking the talk and you're doing the part, no matter how much success you have or don't have, someone's going to look at you and be like, man, that person got something that's different than that person over there. You're a little bit different. You have an attitude about yourself that you carry. 
right? What about your actions? You can talk about being an entrepreneur all you want, but you don't do nothing, it's really up to you. You can gain the skills. It's great to gain the entrepreneurial skills, but to gain the entrepreneurial skills and not apply them, once again, you cannot call yourself an entrepreneur, right? But gaining those skills and applying those skills, that's what we want to see, okay? Approach. The approach you take is very important. It's going to be a windy road. But if you're going to keep going through the process, don't always stay on the same journey. You do the same things the same way, you never actually get anywhere. We know that, right? Do the same things the same way, never get there. So your approach, be flexible. Be willing to adjust because your journey is going to change. So you have to change, right? When you do make your first $100, your first $1,000, whatever it may be, be prideful about it. Talk about it. Share it. Be grateful. But your approach to that is, okay, how do I do it again and again and again and again, right? Your attributes. Understanding your attributes, being honest to yourself, respecting the value that you do offer, but also understanding what you don't have brings a lot of humility to yourself. If you don't have that humility, it's okay. But what I want you guys to do is gain that humility and truly understand how to use it to your advantage, okay? That's what self-design is all about, okay? So we talked about entrepreneur, we talked about what? We talked about entrepreneur mindset, we talked about entrepreneur spirit, we talked about an entrepreneur journey, and we talked about the entrepreneurial, um, uh, self-awareness, and we talked about, we talked about self-design. What I want you guys to do, you can have this for later, we're not gonna do it here, but is to do a personal SWOT analysis. A personal SWOT analysis is nothing more than, uh, nothing more than your strengths, champion your strengths, being honest about your weaknesses, where your opportunities are, and what are some potential threats in your way, okay? So what I want you guys to do today is just, if you could, give one of them, put one of them down right now on each of the blocks, okay? I'm gonna stop this one and I'm gonna start another one real quickly. And we're basically done. We said we wanted to be done by seven. We're literally done by seven, so. Stick with me here. QX, there we go. Okay. So take just maybe one minute, write down one of your strengths, one weaknesses, uh, one weakness, uh, one opportunity you feel is, is there that you have and one threat. It'd be great if you can just throw as many you can eventually, but right now just walk away with at least one that you can think about, okay? As you guys do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and give you guys a little bit more. Um, as you sign up for this uh, worksheet, um, this uh, resource document, you get access to the rest of the mastery. What I want you to do is write about a time when you were in extreme pressure circumstance or a situation, right? And how were you able to handle it? Knowing how you can handle extreme, extreme pressure situations is going to be very, very important throughout the process. We're going to go through some extreme situations. Sometimes it's going to be a moment where maybe you have a partner who joins you and then they want to quit. That's an extreme situation. Why do they want to quit? How does that impact you? How do you handle a situation like that? One day you're going to make $10,000 and then you're going to lose all that money because you had to spend it on something else and you're not going to gain $10,000 back. What do you do with that situation? How do you keep your company up, right? One time you're gonna spend a lot of money on building your company and then guess what? That idea doesn't work and you wanna do something else. Extreme pressure situation. How do you handle it? Sometimes the best way to do it is know how you handle previous situations and that will help you throughout the process, okay? So what I would offer to you guys is um, this program today was really just to capture the mindset but I want to be able to give you guys access to some resources beyond just the class. And the one way to do that is to collect some of our benefits, such as our t-shirts. So if you come to uh, and have set up a meeting with myself, with my other uh, master students who are entrepreneurs and other uh, the coaches that we have here, um, set up two meetings with us, 
you'll get access to one of these shirts that we'd like you to wear. You can come to all of our events. You get different perks. You become part of the community, right? Oh, for sure, for sure.